Hello my friends, my name is Irvin. Thank you so much for joining me today. And so I've been thinking about a, a way I can make additional videos about desktop support uh, without actually being at the computer. So I thought of a way to actually talk about theoretical situations when it comes to issues that you may encounter during your desktop support uh, career, right? So um, it, in this video, I kind of wanted to at least attempt to provide general idea of how to go about troubleshooting different issues, you know, and I'll try to go into something more specific that I can actually explain without a computer. And the reason I'm doing it, obviously, for, you know, while I'm driving is because it, it, it's a time issue for me, you know, I'm driving to work. So obviously I, this is the, pretty much the only time I have besides weekends but then you know how it is guys on the weekends you have to take care of other things that you can't during the week right so I'm gonna try to um, attempt this um, troubleshooting steps while I'm driving right so let's talk about a random issue that you may having you know that you may come across while you're you know doing your desktop support you know you could be just some you know anybody you could be anybody that works for desktop support or you could be you know anybody that just kind of uh, uh, deals with you know general computer issues you could be a help desk person as well you know so let's say you have a program that you you've encountered issue you get a you get a specific error it says you know you cannot run this program because you know there is a um, a corrupted file there's a corrupted file and you can't run this program right so what is the first thing that you have to think about right first of all you have to think about okay so this computer or the, this program the specific program is giving me uh, an error that says you cannot run you have a corrupted file there's something corrupted or it could be just gibberish you could just be looking at something and it all may look Greek to you especially if you're not a programmer you know you look at it and then you, you look at it and it says you know just gibberish you know so how do you go about troubleshooting this right first of all I'll give you the quickest way of doing it right the quickest way of trying to resolve this issue is to um, reinstall the program right this is the most um, one of the most effective ways to resolve these type of issues you just reinstall the program right um, and if that doesn't work, and the reason I'm saying that you, you reinstall the program is because we're talking about time constraint and we're talking about production impact, right? When you're in a business environment, you do whatever has the highest chance of resolving the issue. In this case, reinstalling the program has about 50% of chance of resolving it pretty much immediately. So this is what you go for, you know, first, because this is the best you know the, the best chance of you resolving it quickly right okay so you reinstall the program and it doesn't work okay so you reinstall it and it doesn't work right the reason we're repeating that is because you may try to reinstall a couple of times right and you still get the same result you still get the same pop-up you still get the same error something's corrupted you, you just know something's corrupted right well the next step to do is actually make sure that you've reinstalled it correctly, right? So you would uninstall the program. You would go ahead and uninstall the program and delete any traces of it that might be left. Because a lot of times when you delete a program or when you uninstall it, right? When you uninstall it, there are traces left of the program. And a lot of times, actually most of the time, configuration files are left over which could be the cause of the issue, right? A lot of people don't know that, right? Especially if you're new to desktop support or help desk, right? You're not aware that there might be some leftover programs. So you go ahead and uninstall it, right? And this should remove any registry entries. You know, sometimes it doesn't, but it should remove any registry entries because that's, that's another thing we have to look at. But first, once you uninstall it again, you've done your uninstall, you go back in, and you look for the folder that it was installed in, right? Chances are um, that the folder will remain there, right? Um, it's about 50-50% chance that will remain. For example, in program files, there'll be a folder with the same name for the software. You go in there, and if it's there, delete it, because it might have some configuration files that are stuck in there, okay? 
second place where programs leave traces of um, data and configuration files is in app data folder right so where do I find this app data folder if you don't know um, this was this is found in um, local C okay so your C drive right users um, and then you would pick the name of the profile that the person is used to log in so whatever their login name is there will be a local profile created under their name so see users users login profile name right and then within there you will see a bunch of folders right app data folder may not be visible okay depending whether it's enabled for it to be viewed right and that's okay though right at, where right as you see your uh, window up there it says see users name of the user and then you type in forward slash app data so app data right and within that folder you will see three different folders one is called local one is called local low and the other one's going to be called roaming okay so <clears throat> typically um, you would find um, things in local folder and, and a roaming folder right local low usually not it's it's it, I've never seen it well it's not that I've never seen it but it's it's so rare you know but first we need to go inside of a local folder right inside of a local folder look for the name of that software that you're trying to troubleshoot look for it look for any traces of it there, there's a folder left with the same name now be careful though you don't want to delete everything that's in there you know you don't want to because you'll destroy other programs just look for that specific software look for that specific folder and if you find this software um, that this folder with the same name go ahead and delete it right same thing go back and same do the same thing for the roaming profile for the roaming profile under the roaming profile um, look uh, under roaming folder I should say look for the same name um, a folder of the software that you're trying to troubleshoot once you find it delete it okay um, then reinstall the software again okay this way you know you've cleared all the cached data configuration files anything that might be left over from this folder from this file from this program and then reinstall the program again and see if it works okay there's a really good chance that it will okay but if it doesn't go ahead and uninstall it again go through the same thing we just talked about go to see users app they you know see users person's login name um, app data go to the local and roaming and delete any traces of it but this time go to reg edit go to registry and look for any traces left over of this program delete any registry entries that you find within reg edit so um, that in order to get the registry obviously you would type in and in the run command you would type in reg edit right reg um, edit edit right and that should solve your issue guys these are the basic troubleshooting steps you can take to pretty much go about resolving any software issues you know and I'm talking about just this type of specific now if you have a specific um, type of error for example fail to run Java you know like you get to you know you, let's say you get a pop of it it says blah 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 dot JS right that means JavaScript that means something's issue with the Java that's different I'm just talking about corrupted files or, or anything weird that just says gibberish and it's corrupted obviously corrupt the program right this is how you would go about resolving it and if it still doesn't work at this point you would reach out um, well first of all you can reach out to your team members to see if they encounter this issue um, th they may have a solution for it you know or and, and if that doesn't and if you don't have that type of uh, um, privilege then reach out to the support of this software you know tech support of this software so they can help you resolve this issue right because you know guys we're not programmers um, you know maybe we know some basic programming to you know deal with issues but generally speaking I'm not a programmer so this is these are the steps I would take in order to resolve 
some basic, you know, troubleshooting, software troubleshooting, you know. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this came out decent. It's kind of difficult to do while I'm driving. Uh, but, you know, hopefully it helps, you know, at least kind of help you visualize on how to go about it, you know. All right, guys, if you have time, please go to facebook.com forward slash Kobo Man and like my page. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.